Okay, so once you've done that, click on the OK button. You'll see that the image appears on the top left because it's absolutely positioned as well. And we're going to go in and change the positioning attributes for YouTube. Now I'm going to copy all of the uh, CSS from the, the RSS one because it's going to be pretty much the same. It's just we're going to adjust the positioning and the width and height of the image. So I'm going to copy that in and then we'll adjust all of the dimensions for the height and width now. So the height will be 44 pixels and the width will set to 52. Still position absolute, but we need to bring it further down from the top of the sidebar div. Okay, so I'll adjust the position top by 70 pixels. So it's going to push 70 pixels away from the sidebar div, which is the relatively positioned div. And 21 pixels, I'm going to set it from the left because it was slightly out. I'm going to adjust the, huge, uh, the RSS feed one as well. And we'll preview that in the browser now to make sure we're doing OK. And yep, the image is there. It uh, rolls over and it will also go to my YouTube channel. OK, so far so good. We're doing well. So we just need to repeat the same steps for the Twitter and for the contact. So insert image objects, roll over image. This one I'm going to call Twitter and we're going to browse for the back image, the Twitter back. Click on that. Notice the dimensions again and uh, we're going to click on the rollover image for Twitter front and click OK. Alternative text, I'm going to put my Twitter feed and I'm going to put the URL for Twitter, my Twitter account, which is twitter.com slash dreamweaverman. Okay, notice it positions itself at the top left as well. It's because it's absolute. And uh, we're going to adjust the height of this. So I'm going to copy and paste the um, same coding as before. And I'll also copy it into the contact div as well while we're here, just to save a bit of time. Like that. And all we need to do, again, is adjust the dimensions for the height and the width of the image. And also its position. The left position seems to be okay. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the Twitter to 53 pixels in height and 53 pixels in width. And uh, it's just a top positioning now. So I'm going to adjust the top positioning to 110 pixels. And that will bring it down just below the YouTube Im image. It doesn't matter if the divs overlap because they're all transparent. Okay, so let's go back in and do the contact image. So um, it's an email image, this one. So insert image objects, rollover image. And this one I'm going to call contact. I'm going to browse for the back image, then browse for the front image. And it's a nice little vector of a envelope for my contact. Okay, alternative text, I'm going to put in contact me. And um, I'm going to put in my contact form address, which is dreamweavertutorial.co.uk slash contact.htm. Well, I think it is anyway. Okay, so all of our images have been put in now. We're almost finished. We've only got a few minutes to go on this tutorial. Okay, now the height and width of this image is it's a bit smaller. So we're going to adjust the height to 42 pixels. The width we're going to adjust to 43 pixels and the left position, because it's a small image, we're going to need to adjust that to 25 pixels to center it more. And the top position, we're going to make 160 pixels. And that will fit nice and snugly inside that background. Okay, let's see what it looks like in Firefox. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. So we'll just check all the rollover images, make sure they're okay. And uh, yeah, that looks great. Okay, now it's time to set up the JavaScript. Now the script is all pre-made. We've just got to reference it from inside the Dreamweaver HTML page. Okay, now the script is called sidebar.js and it's inside a folder called script. So that's where we're going to reference it. And the script is set to run. It's set to hook onto a div called float div. So we're going to need to encase the whole sidebar we created inside a div called float div. 
So I'm going to type in div id equals float div. And then we're going to go down to the bottom where we put the comment in. I hope you put the comment in, say where the end of the sidebar div was. And then you know exactly where to put it. So we're going to close that div off. And we're also going to put in a comment to say that this is the end of the float div. Okay, so once you've done that, we're going to go back into our CSS. We need to set up a CSS style for the float div. And we need to tell it how big it's got to be, so how wide, how high, and how we're going to position it. And in this case, we're going to position it absolutely and let the script control it through the DOM of the browser. So I'm going to separate all of the other styles with a, a CSS comment, which is forward slash star, star, forward slash. And we're going to set up the hook float div pound float div and open and close curly brackets we're going to set the position colon to absolute and put semicolon on the end now if you click in design view or press refresh you'll see that the absolutely positioned div has now wrapped itself around the whole thing so we're going to set a width of 94 that's the width of the background image that we initially inserted and the height of the background image was 229 so we want it to be nice snugly fit in there Okay, we're going to set a position of top and zero. So we want it to be zero and zero on the left. So it's going to bunch itself right up to the top left of the browser window. Okay, so I'll preview that in Firefox so you can see what I'm talking about. So right, it's really far up left and that's the original how we had it just now. And it's further into the left, but we're going to still push it in a bit further later. Okay, so let's go back into the source code now. We need to reference that script file to get it all to work. Okay, so at the end of the float div, we're going to type in script type equals and quotation mark. That will bring up a select option. So we're going to select text slash JavaScript. And we're also going to type in SRC after that. And the SRC is the source. So where is it? Equals and open quotes. And we're going to find that script. So click on the script. It's called sidebar.js. Click on that. We need to close that script off, the script tag. So we're going to put a close angle bracket, open angle bracket, and then slash script, and then close that off completely. Now that is going to reference the scripts there. And you notice it appears next to the sidebar CSS. Okay, now I've pre-adjusted this for you to appear zero on the x-axis and 300 pixels down. So although we haven't got any content, we can see that when you preview it in the browser, you're going to see that it appears 300 pixels down from the browser window and zero pixels on the x-axis. So it's going to appear on the left. Okay, so I can see instantly that the JavaScript is working. It's grabbed hold of it and it's adjusting it for us. But what we need to do is we need to make sure it's definitely going to scroll down the page. So we're going to set up a div with an ID of content and we're going to put a paragraph tag in it. And we're going to put a lot of content in there so it scrolls down the page enough so that we can use the scrolling feature of the browser window. So once you put in the paragraph tag, I want you to go and find the Lauren Ipsum text, which should be in the files panel. Click on that and then copy all of that text. And you're going to paste it into the paragraph tag inside the div that we just created called content. Okay, so paste that all, all the way in there and uh, click inside the design view. Press refresh, you'll see that it appears. That's fantastic. Okay, and you can see really how transparent the background image is there. Okay, so let's preview that in Firefox and see what we've got. Okay, so we can see that it's going to scroll down the screen, and that looks good. Now, if you if you can't see the effects properly on the screen, it, it is very smooth scrolling, so don't worry. Now, um, what we need to do is we need to bunch that text in a bit. So we're going to set some selectors for the um, the content div that we just created. So we're going to put in pound content, open and close curly brackets. Okay, so we're going to set the width to 850 pixels, and we're going to set auto margin. So margin left. Um, auto and margin right auto and that will center the paragraph giving free roam to the social network widget and because it's not completely up against the browser window we're going to set a minus pixel attribute to it so we're going to put in margin dash left into the sidebar div and we're going to set minus 10 pixels and that'll push it right up against the browser window and there's a the complete effect. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it's James from dreamweavertutorial.co.uk. 
I'll see you next time.